Well, first of all, I want to give Jack a lot of credit because this looks completely different than what he looks like now. And secondly, I want to give some of you guys who are struggling to gain weight some tips that I think are going to be very helpful for you. First of all, I want you to stop listening to things like this. The only thing that makes these foods bulking or cutting foods is that these ones are higher calorie and these ones are lower calorie. But if you want to have an apple or sweet potatoes while you're bulking, just eat what you like and you're just going to eat more of it. That's the only difference. There's no such thing as bulking and cutting foods. Now, will these foods make it a lot easier? Yes. So if you're someone who doesn't have a big appetite, it's going to be much easier for you to eat a whole steak versus a chicken breast, for example. Because with a chicken breast, you're going to need to add more fats since it's mostly protein. And on top of that, you'll need to have a carb source. So you're not going to have a watermelon as your carb source because it's high volume food. It's full of water and fiber. But there's no reason why you couldn't have a Greek yogurt and put peanut butter in it. But if you're bulking, I would consider getting full fat yogurt, for example, because it's more calories that you need in order to gain weight. There's really no such thing as a lean bulk. This is just simply what you should be doing. A dirty bulk is just eating everything in sight. And that's just going to make you gain mostly body fat that you're then going to have to turn around and lose. So in order to minimize the amount of body fat that you gain, you're still going to structure your meals in an organized way and you're going to track your calories because otherwise you will have no idea how many calories you're taking in and therefore you'll have no idea which direction you should go in. So I would suggest using Macro Factor to track your calories. I use it for my clients. I use it personally and I just think it's an amazing app for not only tracking calories but for learning about nutrition and actually reaching your goals. And this is really the key for some of you hard gainers or just people who don't have an appetite. Big shakes are going to be a game changer for you guys. You don't have to follow this exactly. It's not really rocket science. You just put everything that you like into the blender. So if you don't like bananas, don't use bananas. Use mangoes. But if you're trying to pack as many calories into a shake as possible, if you're really busy or if you just can't eat that much, go for high calorie foods that you like. For the whey protein, I wouldn't put more than two or three scoops in at a time. Some people experience gastric discomfort when they take in too many protein supplements, but up to you. Now, if you're going to make shakes at home, I don't find buying a mass gainer to be useful, but they're perfectly fine. There's nothing in it that's going to harm you. I just personally don't think it's worth it from a monetary standpoint, and I would much rather be able to control exactly what's in the shake. So up to you again. Now, this is the most important part that I should have put at the very beginning, but if you don't work out and if you don't work out properly, you're not going to bulk no matter what you do. Actually, you probably will bulk, but it will be mostly fat, which we don't want. So if you're a beginner, if you're someone who's been working out for a few years, but you really haven't been trying that hard, the specific program that you choose doesn't really matter as much as how much effort you put into it. So whether you do push pull legs, full body, a bro split or something else, what actually matters is that you're getting enough total volume, that you're working out often enough. So not just two or three days a week, but maybe four or five, that your workouts are intense enough. So you're not just going through the motions just so you can check all the boxes and then go home. And what's most important is that you're working out consistently and with progressive overload. And progressive overload just means that you're increasing your weight, reps, sets, frequency, intensity, or a combination of those over time. And that, my friends, is how you're going to start your bulk. There are lots of things that we could go into, of course, but that's a good start.